All right, so Dr. DT, you want to get started? Yeah, yeah, so let's begin then. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is DT Huynh, and I'm the interim head of the computer science department here at UT Dallas. Welcome to tonight's lecture in the spring 2021 Grace Lecture Series. This wonderful woman empowerment lecture series inaugurated back in spring, I guess, five years ago. Six years. Uh, six years ago included <laughs> so many wonderful speakers from industry as well as from academia, especially from UTD and even from the CS department. And the current effort is uh, led by Dr. Pushpa Kumar and Dr. Oren Mazidi. Uh, Dr. Pushpa Kumar, please go ahead and introduce the speaker today. Uh, she will share with us, you know, our speaker will share with us various stages of her wonderful career as a professional woman. Go okay. ahead, uh, Pushpa. All right, thank you, Dr. DT. So again, before we get started with the talk, uh, I just wanted to ask this audience, does anyone know what is the talk number today? Other than Michelle. Michelle, don't answer. <laughs> it's somewhere between 25 and 30. It is actually our 31st talk today. Oh, I am close. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> yeah, very close. And so what I did is, uh, I actually wanted to acknowledge uh, Dr. DT for his support for this virtual race series. And also our previous head, Dr. Gupta, who encouraged the initiation of the series. Also Michelle, who's here. Michelle writes all our stories. She's uh, very dedicated. She comes for every talk. Hi, Michelle. And also a big thanks to uh, Norma Richardson, who actually coordinates all the meetings and she sets up the meetings as well. So I had three slides I'm going to show you next. So these are all our previous speakers. OK, so I put in all these pictures of these beautiful and successful women. Can you all see those pictures? So this is our initial talk series, which was years 2015 and 2016, and the uh, inauguration by Dr. Bhavani Turasingam back in spring 2015 and i cannot believe it's been six years of inspiring stories by all these great women then these are the faces of 2017 2018 talk series speakers and that also includes uh, dr inga our provost and dr farooq bastani and dr karen mazidi they're all our own uh, utd faculty and these are the Grace Lecture Series of 2019 and 2020. And uh, Dr. Bhavani Thurasingam, she actually inaugurated the virtual series after COVID. And just to let you all know, this is third time lucky, lucky for Seda. Okay, Seda was supposed to talk last <laughs> April before COVID hit us. And so I had to move her to February and she was supposed to talk last week. And last week we had the extreme winter here <laughs> in Texas. So we had to shift her again. So I thank Seda for her patience because this is third time lucky for Seda. <laughs> so with all this, I'm going to introduce her so we can get started with the talk. So Seda Morer is a strategist and a veteran user experience designer with a strong background in digital accessibility. She established the Seda Morer Consulting LLC in 2020 to follow her passion of helping organizations meet their accessibility compliance goals. So Seda was instrumental in strategizing, leading, and established the digital accessibility program at Sabre. Seda is a thorough leader in user experience and an advocate of digital accessibility as an important element of good UX. Seda also believes that having empathy is critical in designing inclusive and effective products. Seda enjoys mentoring and has presented talks on empathy and accessibility at, at local, local conferences, conferences and organizations. And she especially enjoys mentoring women and ensuring that they are aware of their own value and worth. So it is my honor and pleasure to introduce our speaker, Ray City speaker for today, Seda Mora. So the floor Thank is you. yours, Seda. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pushpa and Dr. DT. I appreciate the opportunity 
Um, may I share my screen now? Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing mine. OK. And you can take it. Do you see the arrow on top, Sarah? Yes. So click on that and then you should. There you go. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Again, thank you uh, all for inviting me. Uh, I am I am a big fan of uh, Grace Harper, so it's uh, so fitting and such such an honor for me uh, to be one of your uh, obviously great great series of uh, speakers and talks. Um, I am going to uh, just briefly talk about who I am and. Uh, a uh, high level uh, career journey and a little more a uh, personal journey because uh, my career I don't think would have been where it is without uh, understanding my personal journey but how, uh, also the lessons that I learned which I hope uh, will be helpful to at least a few people and uh, if there's time i'd love to answer questions if not i will have my information at the end if anyone would like to contact me afterwards uh, for any qa <clears throat> uh, so who am i uh, ux designer dig digital accessibility consultant business owner problem solver an achiever and a mentor and I want to also emphasize how mentoring means so much to me because I did not have mentors when I really needed them uh, as a young professional. And so I truly value uh, the importance of mentoring and I learned so much from the mentors I did uh, have in the course of my career. And I take this very seriously and uh, and when I ask, I try my best to be helpful. Um, my career began as a visual designer. I am actually of um, one of 14 generation, uh, the 14th, uh, as my father was able to trace, um, who were artists and actually up to my grandfather as well, priests. Um, so uh, design is kind of in our blood and uh, I got a degree in commercial art and started my first art job at uh, a job in my field, I should say, at a printing company uh, because of the circumstances uh, at the time um, where I was limited and where I could work. So. Um, but one of the uh, great things I learned at that job was uh, the first computerized equipment I had ever seen, uh, which was iTech Quadratech 1200, uh, to be more specific. As you see in the screen, this uh, um, equipment is basically coding, an equipment for coding instead of uh, typesetting, you know, as it used to be for newspapers to uh, position one letter at a time. Uh, and this was, uh, to be precise, at 18, uh, sorry, 1981 uh, when I got this job. And uh, I, I didn't even know much about computers or had not heard enough about them, I suppose. And yet I got to learn how to code on two different uh, typesetting equipment. But I got very good at it to the point that I was able to uh, lay a form like this without seeing the form itself just through code in print it as one piece. Uh, pr prior to that, I would have, uh, let's say, 
set, as we say, or typeset one line at a time and cut and paste uh, one line at a time. But I became so good with that equipment that I was able to lay this entire form in one piece and just draw the vertical lines on it. Uh, so that was quite an experience for me. Uh, and kind of a open, door opener for me to be comfortable with computerized equipment. Um, the other uh, typesetting equipment uh, that I got to learn also was CompuGraphics, but that was a predecessor and not as powerful as uh, Quadratech. Uh, um, this uh, position, this job was in uh, Columbus, Ohio, where um, I stayed there long enough to get my uh, residentship uh, paperwork completed, and then I came to Texas. In Texas, my first job was with a company uh, called DLM, Developmental Learning Material um, uh, Company, and they spe specialized in learning uh, material for especially uh, children with um, special needs. And uh, so I got to learn a lot um, about special needs and uh, how uh, some children or even adults can get around. I was able to illustrate uh, the production as well as design books and um, um, promotional material, as well as um, planners and postcards. So that uh, book of uh, penguins uh, was my illustration. Then I chose to uh, go on my own. And so this time, uh, this was my first time to be uh, in business for myself. And for seven years, I continued illustrating for uh, educational material. But I also had um, clients anywhere from perfume uh, and body care package uh, owner, as you can see that from this first image, to sports shoots and uh, and a bullet making uh, company and a candy company, where I uh, designed logos, package design, and. Um, my package designs actually were very successful because uh, let's say for this uh, uh, image that you're seeing the american woman uh, body care and perfume uh, package i uh, designed a perfume box and redesigned the body care and painted the backdrop and uh, directed the photography and based on this photograph uh, this line of products was um, adopted by Home Shopping Network uh, for their catalog offerings. Uh, the uh, brochure behind is of a, uh, uh, like I mentioned, sports shoots um, uh, organization. They sold uh, sports and boats and all sorts of uh, cool, you know, sport uh, items and. Uh, I, they were my client for almost seven years, and uh, I helped them also become successful. So these were kind of uh, cool clients to have and also helped me learn a lot. Uh, in the course of this business was when um, this was uh, from 1988 through 1995 was when obviously internet took off and uh, <clears throat> computer, uh, computerized graphics were already in place. I had uh, computerized graphics. I was very familiar with them, but uh, with also explosion of uh, internet in a sense, um, things became a little too expensive for me to maintain, to upgrade constantly, whether it was software or hardware. So I chose to abandoned the business. I also was missing teamwork. I wanted to learn from others. And um, and I uh, started working for large corporations where they were offering the opportunity to also uh, receive additional trainings and uh, training in advance. Uh, so I started working 
<clears throat> for an organization where they literally hired me to learn and teach. That to me was a dream job. <clears throat> I apologize. <coughs> I learned anything from um, uh, 3D animation to uh, database structure to fusion uh, coding language uh, and of course HTML and web design and um, uh, I basically worked, uh, learned myself out of a position. <laughs> there, there was nowhere in that company for me to go to advance. It was just uh, so much uh, that I wanted to do, so I moved on. But uh, when I moved on, I uh, focused on inter interaction uh, design. I focused on web design, and um, eventually I uh, became more and more attracted to industry-specific uh, large data applications. The challenges there were just almost endless and very attractive to me. And uh, gradually became, as you can imagine, also terminology was evolving and uh, solidifying to finally a UX designer, which uh, is what uh, I was doing uh, because I was engaged from interaction, uh, information architecture level all the way to um, final designs. And uh, in the course of these years, um, I, of course, I maintained as much knowledge as I could about digital accessibility and uh, try to keep up with it. Uh, but it wasn't until 2015 when at Sabre I was given the opportunity to um, establish, if you will, a, a program um, so that uh, the entire organization could follow. That was truly my second dream job. And, um, and I believe that I was successful with my um, end of the bargain, if you will, and, uh, and the program is very successful now with the organization. In the course of these years, I had a few accomplishments, such as uh, being award, uh, awarded for a logo design, uh, increased sales of uh, customers, uh, in uh, whether I was working uh, as a business owner with them or as an employee, um, increasing sales by over 45%, at least three times that I was told about it. I, I, I don't always follow how successful um, financially the a design becomes for um, the company I work with, but uh, at least in these three occasions, I was aware uh, my package designs were successful where a, or a company uh, that was just newly formed, even though, of course, they had a delicious um, uh, product, they had a candy, but uh, the package design uh, that I created for them was attractive enough for a, a store such as Neiman Marcus to uh, take on to sell uh, three months after their um um, you know, establishment. So uh, these are kind of very practical uh, accomplishments that I'm proud of. Also, in, in the course, uh, since uh, I went back, uh, if you will, uh, to corporate uh, positions, I have trained hundreds of my colleagues and peers in um, anything from HTML, what is HTML and what is web design and web development and specific tools with them, uh, about them, to all the way to what is accessibility and uh, what are the laws and processes, etc. cetera, um, and uh, help bring that to light for many people. And uh, again, that's, to me, a, a great accomplishment uh, when those type of uh, information was not as 
uh, easily available for people. My other uh, major accomplishment, I feel, uh, was the fact that once I established that um, access digital accessibility program at Sabre within one year, the Nobility, uh, which is a, a nonprofit, excellent um, organization that is just dedicated to digital accessibility, recognized Sabre as a partner. Uh, corporation because of uh, that program. And finally, I also was able to uh, speak public, uh, engage in public speaking since 2015, mostly on digital accessibility uh, and in some occasions on a more um, um, human uh, interaction type of uh, talks. So I want to just give you a little um, picture of my personal journey. I am of multicultural origin, not as um, my parents being multicultural, but where I grew up. So I was born in an Armenian um, family uh, in Iran. So I was a, a Christian of a Christian minority. Um, with uh, a strong emphasis on speaking Armenian at home, for instance, and uh, definitely going to Armenian school or Christian school um, to maintain our heritage. But it also helped me uh, learn a lot about um, two strong, strongly different uh, cultures in be able to uh, keep an open mind and uh, appreciate uh, that what cultures offer, which has helped me obviously um, throughout these years. I did have challenging childhood and teenage years. Um, <clears throat> I was raped when I was a child and I had um, many, several um, um, if you will, uh, sexual uh, assaults experiences in my life. So uh, in my uh, childhood and early teens, uh, which left me with a lot of uh, negative, as you can imagine, um, emotions, confusion, um, guilt feelings, uh, because, um, you know, the culture also was kind of emphasizing it was my fault, right? I'm... I'm the little girl, I didn't behave myself, or whatever the case was, uh, it didn't matter. It, it just, uh, it, the downside of it was that it stripped me of my own worth and value. And um, that was the hardest part. I did not appreciate myself. I did not appreciate my own um, abilities and uh, strengths or talents. Uh, and uh, in, in teenage years, especially, I uh, became uh, an overeater, kind of, to compensate for that, which is even makes things even worse. But I had a wonderful um, exploration, I guess, or eureka uh, year, I should say, not years, but it started um, when I was uh, 18 years old. Um, I did read a book called How to Stop Worrying by Dale Carnegie. That was life-changing, if not the biggest gift anyone could give, could have given me then. And uh, one of the lines that I hung on to was, oh, what's the worst that can happen? So I, uh, I learned not to... Um, let's say, worry about the past as much or dwell on it uh, and uh, not worry about the future either because if I want to do something, just do it. What's the worst that can happen? Unless I knew it was the worst was just unbearable, obviously I wouldn't do it. But this gave me uh, such an inner strength and uh, enablement and also um, Allow, allowed me to explore uh, with my life. 
which was a perfect thing because I could not afford to go to a university. My <clears throat> the education system there basically uh, is dependent on <clears throat> your parents' wealth, and my parents did not have wealth so they couldn't afford to put me in university and I joined the workforce and of course joining the workforce and experiencing what I had was made me even more determined that I need to get a higher education I, I'm not happy I'm not satisfied I'm not content with just um, working as let's say a clerk uh, for anyone. So uh, I was I was looking into higher education, but um, again, being uh, with a family who was not very wealthy, my sister and I were actually supporting our family until, uh, thank God, my father found the right job for him. And my sister and I were able to save some of our uh, income. And uh, five years later, it uh, took me five years uh, to collect enough money to uh, come to the States for higher education. So it was a new world and a new life. And um, for those of you who have uh, traveled, obviously, who have uh, migrated, you know uh, what that feels like. There's so much to learn. There's so much to understand. Mm, as confused as I was, <laughs> I was welcoming every step of it. It was great to have the opportunity. And then, of course, um, I also, as I mm, was moving from uh, Ohio uh, to Texas, um, or uh, on my way to California, in a sense, I stopped in te um, at Texas to meet a friend. Briefly, I met my husband the very first weekend I was here. And um, four months later, we were married. And uh, and my second round of evolution, if you will, started then. So when I talk about evolution, I want to, you know, for you to keep in mind uh, the childhood and the, um, and the teenage years that I've had, as you can imagine, uh, it's just very stressful, right? Very um, taxing. So uh, I had developed chronic pains. I had uh, chronic back pains, lower back pains, where I couldn't even walk more than 15 minutes before I'm in excruciating pains. And then also I had picked up um, smoking and uh, I was smoking one and a half to two packs of cigarettes a day, uh, which was not healthy either. And uh, I think if I had continued, I probably wouldn't have survived by now because I had already at the age of 30 started uh, coughing a lot and just having all sorts of health problems. And then, uh, came another Eureka moment for me. I received a special gift, and that was a transcendental meditation uh, through my husband. Um, I was resisting that he offered. Uh, uh, he kept telling me that it will help me with my chronic pains, but I was afraid uh, that uh, there was a commitment to another religion or whatever the case might be, and um, I didn't want any part of it and until one of these uh, the, one of the days that I had very, very bad attacks of my pain, I gave in and uh, I'm so glad I did because this truly was life changing uh, experience for me. So I I learned, I constantly explored and learned about myself and made discoveries uh, through transcendental meditation in the midst of life's punches. <clears throat> I want to talk to you a little bit about life's punches. 
And I want you to picture yourselves as your core, your in within you, as a snow globe. Uh, you can put whatever image you think uh, it's a representative representative of purity of goodness or or whatever uh, brings joy to you. So imagine we are born with this level of uh, purity and this level of, uh, I would even say, connection to our uh, creators and uh, to our um, universe. And then things happen, right? Uh, in my case, was uh, childhood traumas and uh, uh, burn, growing up with, uh, in a family that constantly had financial hardships and then uh, leaving home, right? I, I did not get to see my sister for 19 years. Uh, she had two children. I saw the first one only when he was two months old. So um, these are hard, uh, as most of you know, hard things to adjust to. The new world itself, what uh, all the learning that needs to take place and the new life uh, with a partner, as much as I love my husband and he was truly my soulmate, still uh, it's a marriage. Marriages are never easy. And then um, loss of parents, right? I got to an age where I started losing my parents. I lost a sibling to suicide. Uh, that was probably the hardest thing uh, at the time, the hardest thing I dealt with because he was like my twin. And uh, the outcome of that one actually was cancer. So I'm a cancer survivor also, but I, I was aware that it was the stress of um, losing uh, him and, um, you know, on top of everything else uh, that caused it. And uh, the last one of them, of the hardest punches that I've had was last year when I lost my husband. So life is full of uh, punches, right? I'm, I'm hoping none of your lives are as kind of looks as complicated as mine is, but yet I want you to know I feel like I'm one of the most blessed people on earth. And I was just sharing with uh, uh, Pushpa and Dr. Uh, DT how I truly uh, feel there's so many signs that I am blessed. So, but how do I, how can I feel blessed with all of this, right? What I learned is to be in touch with myself. When I, when something happens, when it's um, even at work, let's say there are disagreements, we all experience that. There are people we, we are having more difficulty to deal with than others. What am I feeling, right? What, uh, why am I feeling this way? Uh, what do I want? I, I examine my own thoughts and emotions. What will help me uh, to move on and to move up? Um, and how can I get there? This is when I, so I start planning. What is my game plan? What do I, uh, what do I need to do to reach my next step or to free myself from the situation I'm in. The way I have learned that I can do these things and move forward is to be grounded. And by, uh, by being grounded, I mean experience that silence within regularly, meditate every day regularly. Otherwise, uh, that uh, dusty globe will never settle the dust down. It will never settle the snowflakes to, for me to remember what's within, to remember that this is temporary stress. It will go away. So I, I constantly try to experience and uh, maintain experiencing the silence. 
be honest with myself without judgment. Okay, I said something I shouldn't have said. Learn not to say that again or learn why I said it, but don't beat myself up in a sense be forgiving. I uh, forgiving myself <clears throat> was a lesson I didn't learn until I had cancer. Uh, when when I when I started looking for ways to uh, help myself n not to ha allow any cancer to grow back or uh, that level of stress to uh, basically leave my body was also the mental um, load that I was carrying. Forgiving is such a powerful tool. I cannot emphasize enough. In, and it's so liberating uh, one to, uh, for one to give yourselves power to move on with your life. Recognizing fears. I, uh, I have had so many uh, situations where I start getting nervous, I start uh, ang getting angry, let's say, or frustrated. And if I take one moment to just sit quietly and think, what is it, right? What's going on? What are the emotions? What are the thoughts? And what are the fears? In the minute I recognize the fears, it amazes me how fast those emotions subside. Fear truly is a destructive um, tool, uh, a destructive power. In, and if we can recognize the fear in ourselves and calm it down, I think we also recognize it in others and not to try not to agitate them either. Take responsibility for uh, my own actions. I, I'm i hoping I have few friends now I know have joined this call, uh, my guests, and I hope they can also uh, attest to the fact that I do take responsibility of my actions. I, I want I, I don't like pointing fingers uh, at anyone or anything. I do complain if someone is not being just, um, but I also uh, will ta take responsibility if, uh, you know, for my own actions in if I need to correct something, I'll do that. I don't like to be a victim. I am not a victim. Things happen in life. Uh, not all of them are good or kind, but they're just hurdles I needed to pass. That's how I see it. It's a hurdle I pass in. It's behind me. I am not a victim. And that's when I make my next game plan. The lessons that I learned that hopefully will be um, helpful to end someone here is now knowledge is power, as you all know, and don't stop learning. I am 66 years old. I feel like I have so much more to learn from languages to whatever else is available to me. And, and that also keeps me young. Be curious, right? I, I'm trying to uh, well, not trying, actually, I um, have not lost any of my curiosity about things and about life. And that, to me, also has helped keep my spirits young. I start, especially being in a business that I am in a user experience, um, I hope that I am starting my sentences more real with tell me about something rather than let me tell you what I think or uh, or be kind of uh, super impulsive. And also uh, listening. Uh, listening is such an important uh, art. Um, I know I find myself not hearing people and I, um, 
I'm so sad that I lost an opportunity and did not hear, but I do my best to listen and listening not to respond, but listening to learn and be open uh, to what someone else has to say. Pay attention to emotions and fears, as I mentioned. And I find myself, when I'm grounded, when I keep myself grounded, I start studying situations. And that is uh, an understanding not only my own emotions, but where the other person, the other party's emotions come from, or their fears, or their concerns. And when you see through that level of... Um, uh, you know, a, another person's uh, thought process, then you also, uh, or I was, uh, I have been more forgiving and less angry, which means I am, I've hurt myself less. Of course, create uh, my game plans, right? I always uh, have a plan for whatever the situation is. For example, my I lost my husband. It took me uh, it took me almost seven months for me to just address uh, how to uh, uh, dispose of his clothes. I couldn't even face that. but I, I did it. I knew I had to do it. I did it. I had a game plan for it. and then now that my life, I finally accepted it is without him. Um, I signed up for a business. Now it's that's another focus of my life. It's not going to replace my husband, but it is uh, it's something to keep me uh, occupied, to give me structure and help me live my life. So I always have a game plan. And always be grateful and forgiving. And um, that, once again, these are such uh, maybe cliche things to mention, but they are so powerful and so liberating. So what's going on in your life and what's your game plan? Sasseda? Sasseda? Yes. Thank you so, Thank much, you so for much for sharing. sharing. It was it very, was empowering, very empowering, empowering. And I and acknowledge, I acknowledge you, for, you for, uh, forgetting for forgetting the past. The past. And then making and your, life your life so powerful, 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 powerful and telling and us telling your story us your today. Story. So I'm going to Thank open you. the floor to the audience. If they have questions or comments for Seda, feel free to pitch in. I have a good question here, uh, Pushpa. Yeah, yes, Dr. DT. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so uh, among the lessons learned, you put uh, your first item about uh, uh, don't stop learning. So, and also in your career, you deal with a lot of different areas, right? <clears throat> so you, yes. you got to learn new things many, many times. And so what are the skills in college that you find useful in, you know, keeping learning new things and so on? I'm sorry, what was the question specific? What the, about the question college? is what, what, what are the skills that you gain in college that help you with learning uh, on the job? <clears throat> Uh, the skills that I learned, uh, again, as I studied commercial art, which was more focused on graphics and visual design, but uh, that uh, in that uh, university, it's now university, it was college back then, I couldn't even, uh, I wasn't allowed to have a minor. They had a very strong uh, visual design and commercial art um, program where I had, uh, I believe, 78 semester hours of uh, a different, um, um, you know, art-oriented classes from uh, art appreciation, art history to printing and printmaking and also all uh, types of uh, design classes. Those classes actually, especially for me, having come from uh, the education background that I did, 
those classes were so powerful, especially my design class. I remember um, <clears throat> my um, design class with Dr. Kaminsky uh, in the, after two assignments that uh, he gave us, I felt like I had this scaffolding around my brain that was just loosened and uh, thrown away. I, my, my mind was opened up. I was able to think uh, freely. I was able to think beyond just this very structured, uh, you know, very traditional, maybe. Uh, if I can't... Um, I can't pinpoint except that there was a scaffolding and I literally felt that just break away uh, just by, by this teacher's uh, um, approach to how he was explaining design and how he was teaching design. So my college education was very valuable to me. It was uh, truly an... Um, an evolution in itself for me. I also, because I was staying on campus and I was working as well uh, during, uh, since my second semester, I worked every uh, semester. Um, I had a lot of interactions from, with uh, students from all, you know, from international students to the American students. And I learned so much from them. I learned from interacting with them. I learned from every class uh, was a wonder for me, uh, from political science to, uh, you know, um, a debate or uh, a speech class, uh, the research I could do uh, and learn about how the influence of art in one's development, right? The development of uh, both hemispheres of the brain. Every class was significant for me. So there is a hand up, Sada, and this is Professor Charles Shields. Yes. Hi, hi, Sedna, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to make an observation that I had while you were talking. We've had a lot of folks come in and share uh, wonderful things with us. And in most cases, it's uh, most of the women and other people that come in and talk to us talk about their life experiences, very valuable. They go to this school, they go to that school, they make that decision, they make this other decision. Very useful and it's been wonderful. But you took an approach that was slightly different. You went and shared some really, truly personal things that most people wouldn't have. For example, your abuse that you experienced and other things. And so as I'm listening to your talk, it's more, there's a lot of information about the choices you made, but there's also a um, psychological slash spiritual kind of journey that you went on that you shared with us today. I just wanted to thank you. I thank really you so much. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I really appreciate your willingness to share so much personal things with us. I hope you didn't mind me sharing that, but I shared it because, uh, especially as as women, um, and we, we go through a lot, but we don't dare to talk, right? We don't want to um, diminish the image we created today by uh, any unpleasantries of the past mm -hmm. but i think it's important to know i can truly truly feel the most blessed person on earth regardless of whatever had happened in the past i can do that so that means anyone anyone else can do that as well and i just wanted them to hear the story that yes it's possible and not every negative uh, experience should be life altering towards negative for the rest of the life. Exactly, and very inspiring. The idea of overcoming difficulties, uh, you communicated very well. Anyway, Thank I just wanted to tell you, I am very glad that you shared that. So, um, Thank you so much. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah. Thank you.
Pushpa, this is Scott Allinger. Can I ask a question? Hi, Pushpa, this is Scott Allinger. Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, we can hear you. OK, I'm sorry. I was having a problem with my mic. No, no. Go ahead, Scott. I wasn't. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> OK, um, I just wanted to ask you, said I'm Scott Downer, CS faculty. Um, you've recently formed an LLP, right? And that's a new LLC. experience. Right. How long have you been doing that? Has that been around? Uh, no, I just uh, formed it. I started the paperwork in September oh, okay. and uh, I had my first, uh, I actually had uh, like three uh, business offers uh, by December and I had already signed with one individual. So I signed a contract and I uh, wasn't intending at the time to work full time. It was just to be part time um, because I was still, I, I, I feel stronger right now but uh, back in december i felt like i was still um recovering <clears throat> grieving okay. so uh, what but i was I, curious I, I, about uh, is work, it's yeah. a different type of model right compared to previous employment models and i've been doing consulting like that i was just wondering if you could tell us what you see good about it and what you see as challenges uh the challenges with an llc mm -hmm. Uh, the challenges for me actually right now, for example, uh, was lack of legal knowledge. That's mm -hmm. something I learned um, uh, a little on a, with a difficult way. So I would highly, highly recommend if anyone's um, signing up a new business, especially an LLC, which means that you're basically a sole um, employee of the <laughs> company also. <laughs> Uh, to uh, seek legal advice first before signing anything. So I I did it the wrong way. I signed and then I uh, you know paid for the legal advice and realized that uh, oh boy have I have I given up a lot, uh, which is fine. Uh, again, what's my game plan? Right, change the contract or mm -hmm. if not terminate it. Uh, I have options. So um, that was uh, the one uh, mistake. It was uh, my mistake. Again, I'm uh, taking ownership of it. No problem. We'll fix it and move on. But uh, I, I am also a little in it, just so you know, I'm in a little different position than I was, let's say, 30 years ago, right? Uh, then I was younger and I, I depended on that income. Uh, right now, I don't have that strong uh, dependency or need for it. I'm doing it because A, I'm passionate about digital accessibility. I, I want to help as many organizations as possible to do the right thing. There's, so, there's such a lack of knowledge there. Uh, not that it's not available, but people just don't know exactly even where to go to collect them. And uh, I feel like I, I can still be of value. So I'm I'm going to do that again uh, for a while in a part-time basis. And that's why um, I'm not uh, as worried about advertising or, or uh, you know, um, making sure that I have like 10 contracts ready at a time, even though, like I said, I did get uh, at least three in the first month. Okay, well, I just wanted to wish you good luck because I've had experience doing that since 1998. And I was sort of fortunate I had uh, a lawyer in my family and he referred me to a labor lawyer and a contract lawyer. So I sort of started off sort of nice with that. And now, of course, I'm just teaching full time at UTD, but there's a possibility I may do some part time work in the future. OK, so I wish you good luck with that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're on mute. So next hand is Zen Park. Go ahead, Zen. Zen, you have a hand up.
Maybe he's on mute? Oh, no. We can't hear you, Zen. Zen, I found I had to activate it twice, so try re-clicking it. So it looks like there's a problem, Seda. OK. But there are a couple of questions for you on the chat as well. From Gro Glory. Glory Joe. OK. All I see is from your experience. What is the rest? How do you learn new things fast from your experience? I'm not sure if I understand the question. Why Why do you uh, assume I'm lo learning things fast? I don't, uh, it will, let me just take a stab at it. I, I don't think I am uh, learning things uh, sometimes as fast as I need to. Like I said, uh, I just made a mistake with my LLC contract. Oh, it's too bad. <laughs> I'll fix it. But um, but I trying to uh, I uh, I'm trying to always keep in touch with what I'm doing. Again, uh, I I do keep in touch with my own emotions and uh, feelings. In uh, if I if I don't feel good in my gut about something, something's wrong. So I start uh, exploring it. As I mentioned earlier, I try to observe it, right? What is going on? What went wrong? Maybe I need to backtrack a little bit to fi find out what uh, was said or done that uh, uh, sounded alarming and uh, and take it from there so uh some things i may react a little more um quickly with good knowledge and sometimes i don't and again i forgive myself and i just learn from it there is another question on the chat seda from mohini yes So the uh, workshops that I held um, uh, were uh, mostly about um, empathy, uh, em um, emergence, kind of trying to help people realize how poorly we design things. And I emphasize it is this uh, empathy immersion exercises and uh, and workshops were not designed to uh, for anyone to say, oh, I know exactly what a blind person might go through, or I know how someone with mobility issues that cannot use their hand uh, and goes through. No, my, the, the goal of the exercise is for people to learn how poorly we design things. And through uh, one of the um, digital accessibility models, which is uh, the social model, we are creating disabilities by our own poor design and development of websites, web applications, uh, apps, anything, uh, you name it. When we are not doing coding properly, we are creating disabilities. So because we are in, 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 emphasizing uh, any constraints someone might have. The technology is there. There's no excuse for it. We should not be doing that. And I think COVID-19 actually brought that to surface quite a bit, how applications would uh, fail because they were not properly coded or, you know, uh, access. So uh, that's, uh, that's the level of experience in the, uh, I have had, just amazing responses. People are just elated to to discover how poorly they have done even, but they are just elated. Their, uh, their eyes are opened. Uh, I uh, remember a colleague uh, that said, 
who was not necessarily being very uh, careful uh, to learn about digital accessibility. And she sat with people with disabilities and it was life changing for her. She said, I will never consider that there is a perfect human being anymore because there isn't, right? Everyone has uh, disabilities at some point of our time. So uh, it, it's the ability to understand, gain empathy, and, and want to do the right thing, as well as, of course, in many cases, um, it's financial risks for companies, right? Organizations, if they don't do the right things. As far as um, uh, software, I don't necessarily use software uh, for these workshops. I actually want people to go to something that they might use on a regular basis. Just put these uh, simulation glasses on or wrap your primary hand with uh, tape and, and try to operate on uh, with the other hand or try to operate just using keyboard. Keyboard functionality is just almost like ignored by so many uh, developers or company applications. So I do, uh, I try to use just the basic uh, information available, but bring the, let's say, ugly to the surface. I hope that answers your question. And I think the last question is from Zen. He's joining by phone, etc. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi, okay, so thank you for sharing your uh, personal story tonight. You know, this has been a really interesting night, which I've not been expecting. Um, earlier today, you mentioned having a mentor. I'd like to know how we as students, you know, can find mentors for ourselves, not just any mentor, but someone who we can really benefit from this person. So I'm wondering if you could share your approach on how we would be able to find another person willing to accept a mentorship? Uh, so actually there, um, I, I know one person who uh, was working on a uh, program that was specific to uh, creating mentors and mentees, uh, you know, um, providing a means for them to connect. Uh, when when uh, the first mentor, official mentor I had um, in my career was um, through the organization, they selected for me, but they asked me, what is it I want to learn more? And, and I wanted to learn how to collaborate with leadership of an organization. So I was uh, assigned <clears throat> Sorry, I was assigned a VP as my mentor. And I, I mean, uh, on the surface, uh, this could not have been a worse match than uh, possible. But I learned so much from him because he didn't have time uh, for me to uh, for the details that I would be interested in. He was always like at 30,000 level. I was always at 5,000 level. And he taught me what is important for those at that 30,000 level. Uh, I, I, I just give you an example. I uh, was trying to get um, funding to do uh, research, to do user uh, research for this project. I wrote three different messages, letters to different uh, like director and uh, uh, VP and whoever, and they were like, uh, and explained all I could. Uh, and uh, they all, it all made sense. They were like, yeah, yeah, that's really great ex, uh, um, information, but no, we don't have budget. But, but it was, uh, I was just getting uh, refused left and right. So I went to my mentor. I said, how could I communicate with you, someone at your level? He said, I have responsibilities, and that's the bottom line. You have to tell me or teach me or point to me. What does that mean? What you are asking for means in dollars and cents, and uh, as far as the cost of doing it and the cost of not doing it. 
Wow. I mean, uh, I so I got to work. I I figured uh, found found the figures that he was asking for. Uh, what uh, what would the cost be if we don't do this, and what is the cost if we do that? And I sent that letter uh, to those individuals. And they e immediately ac approved my um, my uh, research for that project. Uh, so uh, I think uh, what you want to consider is where is it that you feel you need a need for improvement, uh, that you don't have enough knowledge that you want to um, learn so that's one aspect of uh, you know finding a mentor that will help you grow in those areas the other is if you have passion about something let's say you also are passionate about web ac accessibility and you want someone else with that experience or uh, knowing you know maybe a little more ins and outs of it then you want to partner with them to learn uh, how to go deeper into that line. So you need to figure out what is it you want to be mentored on and then uh, select a person. And uh, some people also would, uh, let's say on LinkedIn, will uh, maybe share that they are willing uh, to become mentors or, you know, you can approach them and say, hey, I, I like your history, I appreciate it, and I wonder if I could... You know, I, I've had people approach me uh, on LinkedIn and ask if I can be their mentor, and I was more than happy to do that. I hope I answered your question. Um, I have a follow-up question. How, so, you know, there's also dangerous mentors too. Um, <laughs> for example, people who, you know, give the wrong information or maybe actually end up hurting more than helping us how can we qualify because you're not going to be there just uh, helping us all the time how can we determine if this person's actually the right person who can help us instead of you know making things actually worse in the end that's an interesting question because i don't have that experience i'll be very honest i um actually the experience i've had was quite the opposite where the mentee um one mentee I had uh, was a little more self-absorbed than I had anticipated, uh, even though I was seeing maybe signs here and there, but I was uh, willing to uh, continue working with uh, that individual. But they they just exploded at one point and, um, and so uh, disconnected. I, uh, again, I maybe uh, the one thing I would recommend is if you can find, uh, let's say, peers of theirs and uh, do a little research about them individually. But again, I'm sorry, I have not had that uh, level of, uh, that's kind of a mean uh, experience. I Thank God I haven't had that one yet. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I think uh, we are past our time, and unless yeah, there are questions, so I, just, I lost connection <laughs> through my internet. Sure. Uh, I don't mean to keep, I, I can hang on, uh, hang around if there are more questions. If not, um, we can so stop. let's give a round of applause for our speaker today seda for patiently sharing her story and authentic talk today thank you so much seda thank, thank you. you for a wonderful talk seda. thank you thank you very much thank you thank you thank you very much bye bye appreciate so bye can uh, seda if you can send me your slides for the website that will okay. help Okay, I will do we that. get a chance, okay? All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. Again, appreciate your invitation. Thank you again. You're most welcome. Bye. Bye.
Um, you have to stop the recording. Okay. Um, talk, uh, you, you have to stop the recording, guys. Mike, are you there? Are you the last yeah. We, um, were you trying are we to get stop? Yeah. Uh, do, uh, do we stop the recording? Uh, I think Push was going to take care of that, isn't she? Maybe I'm wrong. Everybody just left, though. I guess Push it did leave. Maybe we ought to stop. Um, but the thing is, if we stop the recording, then uh, I think I don't know. I, I might bug this Microsoft team. <laughs> I know, me too. I'll tell you what, I'm going to shoot an email to push button reminder of it. Maybe she'll see it. Or maybe it automatically le uh, stops recording when everybody leaves. I think that's what also might stop the recording. Well, problem, in that case, we need to leave. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and leave. Were you trying to contact me by chat earlier? Um, was I? I thought you'd said sent me a chat. Maybe I'm mistaken, but uh, that's okay. Mike, thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and leave. And I think you're right. I think if everybody leaves, it'll undoubtedly shut down. Okay. Me too. Thank you. All right. See you. See you.